We got it. Okay, cool. So t- you said you learned a ton at West Side, but you're kind of glad you weren't there in your stronger days. Yeah, but the thing is, is, is uh, I think if I was there in my stronger days, I would have tried to keep up, and I would have definitely gotten. I mean, they, they were so. There were some of those guys were so, like AJ Roberts would do box squats, seven hundred pounds, and a blue and a blue band, and move it faster than I could. He was, was like two twenty five with no band. Gotcha. It, it was good. The, the, the amount of speed that they generated and the amount of strength was just phenomenal. So, so what was it? What year was this? Like two thousand ten. This, no, this was uh, 2000, probably 2013, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So it was when AJ, it was right before AJ broke the all-time record. Okay. In the three in the three oh eights. So uh, it, they, there was some just incredibly, you know, Luke Edwards and uh, Tony Ballone. Ball, uh, Ball, they, they were just un, they were unbelievable how strong they were. That was cool. That's cool. So what, what about you? What's your some of your? So you had the. Good mornings. You had the bent over rows. Any other kind of like feats of strength? Do you think you? Uh, yeah, you know, five hundred pound incline bench was a good. It was good. I used to do dumbbell curls, one hundred pound dumbbells. You know, swing them. Like, yeah. I mean, they're not gonna. They weren't strict. Yeah. But uh, you know, there, there, in the in the gym, there wasn't much that I couldn't do, and it wasn't much that I've seen. I mean, I'm sure there's people stronger, but I never saw. There was no one in the outside who could keep up with me on assistance movements. Not close. Yeah. But. On the main movements, you know, Ronnie out pulled me by, you know, forty pounds, and Mike got squatted me. So it wasn't, you know, and then Vinny bench nine hundred. So there were guys who could do the lifts much better than me. But as soon as work, I was as strong as everyone there. You know, I was strong. Yeah, and so what about um, what about some what some of the other mo- more impressive? Like you talk about the stuff you saw at West Side. What about like bodybuilding or or anything else at other gyms you've seen? What's some stuff? You've seen well, Jake has Jake has grant. See, Jake has grant one bench two twenty five for a hundred reps. Wow! Now I know I didn't see that done, but I saw Jay. We trained together. We did incline bench, dumbbell incline bench, and flat flies, and then he benched two twenty five for seventy five on the bench. Wow! So wow. he was incredibly strong. He would do what? Uh, let me think. He did a front squat to six thirty five. For like five or six. What? Um, yeah, oh God, he was so strong. And uh, but he couldn't back squat with you know he back squat like six hundred. It was like, crazy. He was just much stronger front squatting than back squatting. You know he could bent rows. He, he was pissed off because I would do more on bent rows. He ended up doing bent rows like five hundred for twelve with that, out any problem, no belt. You know, but just really just he what was strong. Were you deadlifts too? I never saw him deadlift. Okay. Never saw him, but he would do things like you. He'd be doing concentration curls in the gym, and you walk by and you look down and be an eighty-five pound dumbbell, and you'd be like, "What is going?" Just am- amazing, incredible. His uh, overhead pressing, seated overhead pressing, and I see him do four hundred for three, wow. four five for three. Yeah, he was uh, incredibly, incredibly strong. Vinny was very strong, and I didn't think, and, and, you know, but I didn't think Vinny was all shirt. So I'm like, "Oh, Vinny's really strong." Nah, Vinny's a punk. He's, a, he's always he's all shirt. Then I saw Vinny do stand presses one day with like I think four ten or something, and I go, Vinny strong, you know, and he used no legs at all. You know, he was. Strong. He did use no legs, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, he has not much of a mountain man. He actually did pretty but, good in the trap bar deadlift at the contest too. He did. I don't know if he got. I know he got in the high sevens at least on one of the low handles. You know, yeah, had it only yeah. does bench to just come out of there and do that. That's pretty impressive. Yes, yeah, he was. Uh, he was very strong. Ronnie was incredibly strong. Ronnie came into the gym one night in. in uh, Dungarees and work boots, and 725 was on the bar. And someone goes, I gave you 50 bucks if you can pull it. Ronnie went right, no warm up. Ronnie went right over and yanked it right up. I mean, incredibly strong. Southside was a wild place because I used to get calls, people saying they want to come down to Southside, but he go, they'd say, I hear everyone there is either a juicer or a felon, which is pretty much true. <laughs> but I go, yeah, but the, the, the juices are all decent. You know, we're, yeah, they, and people would go, I, I've heard you killed a couple of people. <laughs> Going, yeah, I don't think I've done that, but whatever. <laughs> but uh, it's cool to have that reputation, but I've gone, no, no, I never did. But uh, the, the uh, Ronnie, the, the, the place would, would be one night, Ronnie and Bobby Bove, they would pay each other to do things that were odd. So one night, Bobby lo- did a loogie in his hand and held it up to Ronnie and goes, I give you 100 bucks if you can put, if you eat that. And Ronnie bent down and slurped it up. So <laughs> another night they... He peed in a cup. 
Ronnie Pete in the cup and said to Bobby, I had 100 bucks and he drank that. And he drank it. I mean, Southside was like that all the time. The only conversation at Southside that I remember were training, drugs, training corn. And that was it. <laughs> not, not much else going on. <laughs> so. Was the gym open to the public? Could like a random person just come in? Yes. It, it, yeah, it was. But it, it, the general public wouldn't have wanted to be there. <laughs> you know. Yeah. At all. <laughs> so, uh, it, it was a, it was a great great place to train, and it was uh, there were some guys in there that were real heavy heavy hitters. You know, did a lot of time in prison. And you didn't want to get too loud in there. With, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you might think that you're big, but you're going, yeah, that guy carries a gun though. He shoots you. You don't care. Yeah, for sure. But, and the owner Joe Sylvia one night, Joe, he didn't like when you didn't put your weights away. That was the one rule in South You had to put your weights away, which should be anyway. And uh, a guy came in who was drunk off the street. He bench pressed that night. He left the weights. He said, uh, I'm not putting no. – Joe said, you got to put those weights away. He goes, no, I'm not going to do it. Joe put, pulled the gun from behind the desk and shot at the wall. It was a wood wall, and he shot into it. He goes, you put it away or I'll kill you. But that guy put those weights away very, very quickly. What? <laughs> I, I imagine in Connecticut, too, they uh, have pretty strict gun laws. So just yeah, well, your firearm. it's funny because I drove into Southside one night, and there's smoke billowing out of the gym. And I'm going, I oh, you motherfucker. I go, this gym's burning down. I'm not going to have a place to train. I open the door. There's like six guys with guns shooting into wood blocks, banging shots off in the gym. And, there's, and the smoke is, is from the from the guns. It's gunpowder. So it was a crazy place to train at. But good times, though. Well, what town sure. is that in Connecticut? That's Stratford. It was. It's now it's closed. But is it? Is that like a? I mean, is is that like a rough part of town or something? No. Or something? Yeah. Yes. No, I don't think that particular neighborhood. But if you go a mile in either direction, it's rough. You know, ghetto. Yeah, because I've never been to Connecticut, or at least not much. If I have, I mean, I've not passed through it before. But I thought it was more upscale and and whatnot. Well, it, it, Connecticut's an odd place because you go Greenwich, it goes Greenwich, Darien, Norwalk, Bridgeport. Yeah. And it goes from. Million dollar homes to, you know, a hundred dollar apartments. You know what I mean? It's just, it's it's an odd place. You one. I, I lived in Indiana. It was the same way. You'd be in a place where there's million dollar homes, and then you drive a mile up the road, and you're in the middle of the ghetto. And then you would drive again, and it'd be nice. It, it was so Connecticut had a lot of that. In it. Where where'd you live in Indiana? Uh, Zionsville. And was were you where, where were you were you training at your house or were you at a gym then? Besides, uh, I, I was training in my house. I had a full gym in my house. Jason Coker trained with me, and uh, so he's my training partner. So just you two, and another kid named Darwin uh, Robinson. Okay, uh, and 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 one of his friends, and then I had Ross Bowsher's another guy, who uh, he totaled twenty one, I think. Okay, he trained with us for like he'd be there six months and then leave and then come back. He was a little flighty, but it was good. It was, it was you know it was enough guys to make it. Good. The gym was I mean my garage was jammed. I had a shit ton of stuff yeah so in a two-car garage you couldn't have a bunch of people in there because you'd just be running into each other just enough room for about five guys so it was good and, okay yeah cool so um what about all your injuries and all this stuff do you think like if you could do it all over again or you would you do it again or you have regrets or I, it, it, my, it, there's a couple of regrets i had i wish i would have stayed i wish i would have stayed athletic and i don't mean like i don't okay. i wanted to play pick up that I should have gone to the basketball court and shot baskets. I probably should have, you know, it, it, I was one of these guys who said, I'm a lifter. I'm not an athlete anymore. I'm not going to do anything but lift. And it made me very stiff and brittle. And uh, I lost a lot of, you know, I used to be able to dunk a basketball. I could touch the freaking net. You know, it's, 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 I think I should have stayed. My, I should have definitely spent a lot more effort on my diet. I, I, you know, for me, it was, I got to get big, I got to get big. So if I had to eat three pizzas, you know, two gallons of milk, that's what I do. And I probably should have rethought that strategy. It was, it was, uh, you know, kill my insulin levels and maybe fat, you know, not fat, but because I had a lot of muscle, but you know, the look you get when you're bloated, yeah. just blow it up. That's the way I was all the time. And it was, I should have really paid more attention to it. And I'm not saying I, should, I was a big fan of doing, you know, I would have done mobility work. You know, like uh, the Sarah and stuff. I wouldn't have probably done that. But I just should have done, at least walked around the block. You know what I mean? Anything. I just would just eat, then I would train, then I'd work, then I'd sit down, and that would be it. So you, when you were doing the west side stuff, you weren't doing like the GPP sled work or anything? or were you? I would do, sometimes I'd do sled work, but too heavy. Now oh, I, I get gotcha. back on it. 
yeah, I do six plates and I'm on a max, you know, I barely freaking budget. I'm going, I'm turning this into a max effort movement. You know, and he's like defeated the entire purpose of it. Yeah, it's I think sometimes I think what happens is when you're not at West Side and you're reading the West Side stuff and you're looking at the tapes, you sometimes take things to an extreme that they don't. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they, they're very hardcore. I'm not. Gonna, I don't want to make diminish anything they do, sure. but you know, Lou goes, we train 27 times a week, and I'm going, no, they don't. You know, Lou might because Lou's there all the time. He has all day. He doesn't work. Yeah, you know, he, he does gym business. But like AJ and them didn't train 27 times a week. Now they might train in the morning and then come back at the night to drag a sled, maybe. But a lot of times they wouldn't even do that. They people have to work. You know, you got to make a living. So the guys who usually would be there in the morning crew work second shift or third shift. Mm -hmm. So when do you have time to do 27 work? Well, I'm wondering oh. stuff like, you know, just if you have bands at your house doing like light band pushdowns for five minutes, if that's a. I, I used to do that. I would do the bands every day. That, now that was one thing I would do. But I think, again, I would go for pumps instead of just going for a recovery. You know what I mean? Well, I think it's a good point you made about just shooting baskets. That would be a very simple yes. way to have some athleticism and not – and actually it'd help yeah. you with active recovery. It wouldn't be like taxing as long as you're not playing pickup basketball. Right. Even like when I was a little kid, like I was calling under, I was really – I was ranked in New England in tennis, I believe it or not. Wow. And, uh, yeah, but uh, I could have gone to the tennis court and hit balls. Yeah, I wouldn't have played because I'm not going to be sprinting around, but – I could have swung the racket back and forth and still hit. And I didn't. You know, I just, I was so stubborn and so foolhardy. I was just like, oh, that's for fags. You know, everything's for, that's for sissies. I'm not doing that. Yeah. And I'm hardcore. I'm hardcore. Yeah, I'm hardcore, but I made myself into a tin man. So now anytime I get out of a groove, I snap something off. And, yeah, you know, it just, I looking back on it, 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 that's my only really regret. Okay. I mean, so some of the injuries I had weren't from, you know, the patella I fell with the squat. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought the spotter was going to catch me. I stepped back and my knee went in. It was really nothing I could do about it. But, like, the, some of the other injuries were, like, I look back now and go, like the bicep, I was trying to curl two plates one day. I said, I'm going to curl two plates. I swing it up and tear my bicep up, and I'm going, yeah, I really only can curl one plate. But I said, I can do two, you know. So, uh, ego lifting, which I don't like the term, but there was a lot of things like that. Where I was by myself, but I was doing it for my own ego. You know what I mean? It wasn't really helping anything. So So maybe not hammer the assistance work so like so, like just keep the assistance yes. work as assistance, not like in I was for me, like the assistance work would be like it would be like during the eight style. Sure. You know what I mean? I go right to failure and, and, and you just can't at least I couldn't. I couldn't recover from that. You know, if I if I do a seven hundred pound a morning it's a lot of stress on everything in your whole posture oh, chain yeah. everywhere. And so, and then if I'm going to do bent rows of 600 pounds, you're probably beating a dead horse by then. You know Are there I mean? any of these? Can we see any of these videos? Are there any of this stuff on YouTube? Or I, I actually do have the videos of, of uh, some of my good morning. Yeah. I only have one, a few training lifts on tape, but I, I they're on disc. I got to figure out a way to get them onto YouTube. Well, it's interesting because I heard from other people that. A lot of people, you know, you do 600 pound plus good mornings. You watch them to like a bastardized quarter squat, but people were saying yours were actually legit. That's what I'd like to see. Yeah, I, I, I've been, I have one where I'm doing 635, no spotter. It's great. It's so stupid. But uh, I'm so far over, I'm going, man, oh man, I was a lot more flexible than I thought I was. And I'm way over, you know, like way over. Like, you know, giving oral sex to myself, that type of thing. <laughs> well, you, gravity's assisting you, dude. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. But see, the one. The thing about the good mornings was, I don't know if it was so much strength, but I had so much fat on the back of my neck, I could get that bar grooved up in there. So when I bent over, it, the bar would never, ever, like, move. And I had such a big belly that I pushed my belly off my thighs. So when I bent way over, I just come right up. And it was, so for me, good mornings were like a natural movement. You know, my, my belly at one time was 56 inches. Louis had one time said that Hasta Boss had a 60-inch waist, and I said, I'm going to get a 60-inch waist. And I got it up to 56, but... uh so I had a big belly, you know. Wow, because you were so lean with your body, but that's a big transition. Yeah, I know. Well, it's funny because the uh, I have a belt that I've had my whole career, and if you see the, where the how many holes I use on that belt, it's like it looks like a, you know it looks like a harmonica. It's all up and down, just holes, 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 holes from where my waist was real small to when I was really fat. And what's the like, most you were weighed back then? Three thirty. What What about like when you're like? 
What did you wear when I saw you in New England at the when you were doing the Bible oh, show? God, I think I was two oh seven. Thing was with that show is I, I was I was so pissed off because Eddie Eddie was at one at the show. Yeah, yeah. And you were at the show and a bunch of dudes. And the thing was is two weeks I had been a week before that in the in the Jake now they call it the Jake Cut was the New England's then. Mm -hmm. And two weeks before that show, I was two twenty seven shredded. Just just like I was that day, but two twenty seven. And typical me, I would go, I go, well, it's if I up my T three. You know, to 700 micrograms a day, and I do another hour of cardio, I end up dropping 20 pounds of, you know, muscle. And by the time I got to the show, I, I was so lean and so dehydrated that my skin wouldn't even press up against my, there was nothing less. You know what I mean? It was like bone, just bone. And I go, wow. oh my God, I might have taken this too far. I remember at the New Englands, my, my guy who was training me, he goes, what'd you weigh in at? I go, 207. He goes, oh, Bob, what'd you do? Because he hadn't seen me in two weeks. He was on vacation. Yeah. He goes, what did you do? And I told him, he goes, he went to the, the McDonald's and got like five burgers and, and uh, sodas. And he goes, eat all this quickly. And by the time I was finished with it, I weighed in again at 204. I lost three pounds. What? <laughs> yeah, because I was just, I was a fat, you know, I was burning so much. I couldn't stop myself. You know, I just had taken so much T3 and, you know, which, by the way, was another you know, body line makes so many mistakes, but now, T3, I can, I, it really cuts me up. It, it does. It makes you cut, but it eats everything you have inside. You know, you look like a, you look like a stringy mess. You know? What was a bodybuilding, what would be like an average bodybuilding drug cycle in the 80s? I'm trying to think. What did I take? I know I did a lot of, I was a big fan of Winstrel for getting ready for shows. You're talking about contests? Yeah, contests? anything. Just, I, I just, you know, you so, See, off season back then, I would take in the off season. I would usually take like uh, maybe a thousand migs of. We had Duratestons. I don't know if they even have those anymore, but they're like uh, sort of sustenon, but a cheaper version. So I would take like a they were snap offs. They were two fifty a piece. I'd probably take four or five of those a week, and then I would take like six hundred migs of Deca, and that you know, and then it, it, maybe maybe an oral, maybe not it would depend. And then before a show, I switch over to. I would always keep a little bit of test in there, maybe five hundred. Then I would do Winstrol. I'd probably do two CCs every day. And then we had Prima Bowling back then. I would do that the whole way through. And then uh, at the end, I might take a, a Halo test and something like that to harden me up. But it wasn't crazy back then because, again, the drugs were good. You had, far, you had farm grade drugs. So you didn't, you know, I, I never ever took growth home until, you know, years and years and years later. And I was actually when I was bodybuilding the second time. And, uh, you know, I never knew what growth home was. People used to tell me, I said, I don't know. You know, it was, that was when it was taken from dead bodies, you know, cadavers. Yeah. But, uh, so we didn't, there wasn't a lot of you, and I would never heard of anyone using insulin. Never heard of it. So it was like pretty much basic stuff, but you, the drugs were so good you could use basic stuff, you know, and, and make tremendous gains, you know. It's crazy. What about, what about of all the people back then? Are you noticing a lot of health problems with people now or no? Jake Casagrande has got some, but I'm not sure if they're drug related or just because he, he had a tumor on his brain. He thinks, I know he had said that he thinks some of it was uh, he took the original growth hormone, and that has been known to give tumors. That's what they felt with Lyle Alzado too, right? That that could yes. have been the growth yes, hormone. Yes, exactly. I I I'm, I I think that was part of it, but um, I think Jay had other physical stuff. Like my thing with my heart, when I went to the cardiologist, he goes, "It's not caused by drugs." He said, "No, they didn't help for sure," and and heavy weight training didn't help. But he goes, your thing, you know, I have two flaps instead of three for my uh, aortic valve. And, you know, my, my heart probably is, it's probably always been very, very big. So I, I think a lot of times people want to chalk everything up to drugs when it's not drugs. I mean, it, it, many people have the same thing I have with their heart and didn't train. You know what I mean? No, I always just get yeah. interested to ask people because I feel like there's a lot of agendas either way where some people are going to blame everything on that and other people will pretend like I would they're, say this. they're I, benign. My, my philosophy always was... If you're programmed to be sickly, you take drugs and steroids and, you know, live that life, you're going to probably be sicklier or sicklier, sicker, faster. You know what I mean? Where my heart might have not bothered me at all till I was 65, it bothered me at 50. You know what I mean? So yeah, I lost 15 sense. years. You know, I don't know. I, so, and again, now it's hard to ever know what people take because you wonder who's honest about what they're taking. Sure. You know what I mean? I, I hear people, you know, Lee Priest, and I'm not down with Lee Priest at all, so don't don't think I am, but 
he takes such minuscule amounts, and you're going, look at now, and, and he, the guy was beating men at 13, so it is possible that he's such a mutant that he didn't. But you hear that, and you go, ah, how can that be? Or Ronnie, you know, you've heard Ronnie cycles are very, very, very minuscule. And then you hear, well, Chad has people taking massive, massive amounts. So you, you never know what to believe because no one's going to really be honest about it. And I don't know why anyone's not honest about it because if you're already admitting you're wrong, what is the difference? What does that somehow diminish what you did? <laughs> you either, it doesn't matter what you did. You know, I mean, you, you have admitted you take it. Who cares if you took 10,000 migs or 1,000 Well, mix. it's sort of like Same if you were in a squat suit, is it, if it's double ply or triple ply, are you like better if you did double ply? Yeah. Type of thing? Yeah. 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 I, uh, you know, it, to me, this, it, it, and powerlifting is too bad it's way, what it is because now we've got people where, you know, the raw lifting is great. The, I mean, the raw lifters, some of these guys, the top guys are amazing. Like Vlad squat 1150 yeah. with just wraps. But it's the people around both federate, both raw lifting and geared lifting that ruin it for the guys who, you know, you, you find yourself getting pissed off every time someone does a lift and you read the comments, you're going, just shut up, dude. Yeah. To say it was a good list. You can't do it. And I can't do it. It was a great list. You know, I remember when Maddox did the seven, did he do 735? Was it before he did seven? I remember going, oh, he sunk it into his chest after the, and I'm going, are you kidding me? Come on. <laughs> hey, guys, hey, that guy's making 750 you know, pounds. Come on. Come on. You know, so no, I, totally. I, wish the, I wish the sport wouldn't be like that. So petty and so small. What it's about just, bodybuilding? What do you think is more petty and small? Bodybuilding or powerlifting? What do you see more of that kind of? I, it's a, man, it, it depends. I think that around powerlifting, they are more petty and small. The people who claim that they're powerlifting fans or they're powerlifters, but they're really not, I think they're more petty. But bodybuilding, the competitors there are really petty. I mean, you've seen this argument with, with Dexter Jackson and and, uh, and Sean Ray. You're going, what, what is the argument? Who cares? You know, Sean Ray said, I would have beaten him in my prime. And Dexter going, no, he wouldn't have. Does it really? You can't prove either one unless they compete. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. It's like the LeBron James, Michael Jordan argument. You're going, but who cares? You can't compare. They're not playing against each other. I there is no argument, you know. So, I, I, I don't know. I think, I, I think bodybuilding competitors are a pretty petty group. I don't think the top guys in powerlifting are. I think the top guys in powerlifting, in my or whatever. Not the top guys. You're a strong guys, guy. You're a strong guy. Are, I don't, I don't the understand when knocking Dave Hoff that's a good lifter. You know? So. Yeah, I think um, usually the people, that, at least the top guys in powerlifting, um, it's usually the people that are further down the, the yes. ladder a little bit that seem to have the biggest issues with things. Right, exactly. Well, I, I've just noticed a little bit. The only bodybuilding is like when somebody, um, you know, would like comment about like, okay, like, well, you know, bodybuilding say should go back to whatever classic physique and Branch Warren should have won the Arnold, where they like they couldn't even, you know, win the, you know, the shirt no. off contest at the, you know, the the right. nightclub type of thing. It's like, you know. Well, maybe maybe bodybuilding should go one way or another, but like it's not like you're standing a chance if it go if it goes back to classic. It's not like <laughs> you're you're looking exactly. to step in and win. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly, exactly. <laughs> do you see you you do you see Branch at all now? We went, um, yeah, we went sh before right before this whole thing went down um, that we're in right now. We went um, shooting. He has some prop. Pretty it's out too bad he retired. I mean, I understand why he retired, but it's too bad because. He was one of the dudes that was really good to watch. You know, he just came in like Branch. And you go, man, oh man, look at the mountain. And people go, he's not symmetrical. And he, they go, who cares? Look at him. He's a freaking mutant. Well, he, you know? he, he also, he can move pretty good too. So when we went out there, I'm going to send you the video. So we were doing, um, we would do like, um, we were training with SWAT guys. So we would like, you know, we'd hit a hammer, do farmer's walks, basically do a bunch of different stuff. So you're like dead tired. Then you have to shoot after you're tired. And I mean, he he was like, I, mean, I already knew he could shoot well, but I he actually moved really well. I was very impressed. Like, yeah, he's a he's a he was great, a very underrated bodybuilder. People never really gave him his due because, again, you know, he came in. I think a lot of the guys who came in Ronnie's era never got their due. Really, of course, yeah. you know what I mean? Because he just dwarfed everybody. And but yeah. Jay, I mean, uh, he, he was a uh, branch was great. Oh my god! I think he'd be good powerlifter too because if you watch, yeah. him, 
Very explosive. He had the mind for it too. Mind for it. Then he's ex- he's so explosive. Like training with him and stuff. I mean, if you see how like he'll do like rows and stuff. I mean, you could you could transfer that into power if he would like commit you know six months to it or something. It'd be pretty. Right. Right. Pretty How's is Johnny Jackson still powerlifting or no? Or he's not at the he's, moment. I know he's bodybuilding. He's, he's back in bodybuilding. Yeah, I don't. Um, yeah, he's he's you know. I mean, he got up to last year seven. 22 in deadlift pretty easily. Um, it got 771 up, but just dropped it at the top. And and come to th- to you know mention it, he was um, like, I mean, he looked horrible that day, and his whole family had been sick. So I think he I think he was definitely capable of it because, I mean, even like warming up, you know, it's just one of those days like 495 didn't look like 495. It looked heavy. So right, right. Yeah. It's too bad. He, he would have. He, he did real well when he powerlifted. He he he, he had good numbers. I mean, yeah, he, he won his class at one of the WPO qualifiers, and yeah, I think he did. Yeah, he was like, and then he did the um, at the Raw Unity in 2011. He just deadlifted, got 832 on a second attempt so easily, <laughs> threw it down because he was so excited, and then red lighted him, so did it again on his third because he wanted a PR. But I mean, that day, I I pretty much think you know up until a certain point, like I would for sure say past 850 had it been like misloaded, would have gone right up. Wow. That's I mean, the only thing that could have maybe limited him at some point, I, I've never seen his grip go out, but maybe that would have been the limit. You don't you ever know when people get that heavy, but like of how the weight moved, if you go, you know, mass times accelerations force, the force was yeah. there to do something freaking huge that day. So, That's crazy. Yeah, they're That's good crazy. guys. You know, they're not, they're not petty like a lot of bodybuilders. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, what about you? You're going to come back and power this or no? Oh, no. I'm, no, I'm just coaching a lot of people now and stuff, so. I'm happy no more competing. It. No, done competing. So, probably smart. <laughs> what about so you think you're gonna get back into it? Or you take a little break. I'm hoping. You know, again, it's very different. So I, you know, I'm always gonna be a West Side. Yeah, yeah. Guy who follows that type of training, but you know, you're supposed to rest 45 seconds between dynamic squats, and I'm lucky if I can get three minutes. You know, it, it's because I can't breathe. You know, the hard thing is. So you know, speed bench is. You know, speed bench might take me a half an hour, you know, do nine sets. So it's difficult. I probably shouldn't be doing it, but I'd like to get on the platform at least once more. You know what I mean? But then you start thinking, well, what if I can only total 17? (laughs) How old are you now? Is it worth it? But I don't know. How old are you now? Uh, 56. Okay. And an old 56, I might add. (laughs) Well. um... I don't have the old man balls yet, though. I, I, I. I take enough to keep them nice and small and tight, you know. <laughs> All right, cool, Billy. Anything else you want to add before we sign off? Nah, that's it, man. It was good seeing you. It was good talking to you. You too. I really appreciate it. I appreciate um, all your insights here. And I um, think it's going to be – I think people will learn a lot. And, I, you know, it was enjoyable and, and fun. So, thanks again. I really appreciate you coming on. All right, Josh. Thanks all right, a lot. Billy. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.